Okay, now we're in part four of the lecture on uh, glutamate-induced brain damage. All right, and I think this is going to be your favorite part of the whole one because this is going to be the most applicable to dietary changes. So the thing we're starting out with is the concept of a bliss point. Okay, a bliss point is what the food companies do. They have research subjects come in, you know, just people from the public come in and they try different variations of their food on the people to see which one they like the best. So they'll put in lots of glutamate. People love glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid. It binds the taste receptors in our mouth called umami receptors. And also those same umami rep receptors are present on other parts of our digestive tract, including our small bowel. And when our body senses that, it's an indicator that this is a good source of protein. Our ancestors worried about starving to death. So when they found a good source of protein, they wanted to get release of reward neurotransmitters so they would return to that location to eat more of that food to help them survive. And uh, food companies, big food, they exploit this. They put more and more free glutamate into that food to activate those receptors, to get people to crave that, to be addicted to it, to want to come back and buy more and more of it. They sell more product. They make more money. They had been joked that, you know, most companies want more market share, more stock uh, share of the investors. But the food companies, they want more stomach share. They want the person uh, eating more of their product. They'll put sodium in there, the salt, because it tastes good, gets people to eat more of the product. They'll have it textured in a way that it feels good in their mouth, the mouth feel. They'll put a amount of fat in there, like they'll fry it. Frying stuff makes stuff taste good, and it also makes things stick to it. It makes the salt stick to the potato chip, for example. They can sweeten it up with high fructose corn syrup. So the goal is to create the ultimate bliss point where the people want to eat more and more of it. And the food companies totally uh, take uh, uh, try to optimize that. And Catherine Reed, the PhD neuroscientist, or well, she's actually a biochemist, the one who cured her daughter of autism by avoiding uh, glutamate in her diet, free glutamate, she said, take a look at how the alcohol, uh, I'm sorry, the tobacco cigarette companies would try to make their products addictive and advertise that even to young people. Uh, well, the food companies do the exact same thing. They try to make their food as addictive as possible. Okay, and here's the big secret. This is a very valuable slide. Um, this is really useful. So this is the concept of manufactured free glutamate. So what it means is the glutamate amino acids are freed up. They're individual. They're separate. So where this comes from is here's a protein. A protein is like a necklace with beads on a string. And these are the amino acids in the protein. So what happens when you process the protein, you cut these peptide bonds that connect the amino acids. So the G's are for glutamate. And you free up these individual glutamate um, amino acids, individual molecules. And the more these are freed up, those are the ones that bind the umami receptors for glutamate and make the food taste good. And you can any type of any type of processing will do this. So if you ferment it, that frees up more glutamate. If you do so-called fat separation, hydrolysis, extraction, enzyme lysis, ultra pasteurization, all of these things will free up the uh, individual amino acids in the glutamate, so you get more free glutamate, more activation of those pleasure taste receptors, okay? And they often start by working with a food that has a lot of glutamate. Gluten, for example, has tons of glutamate, about 25% of its amino acid. That means every fourth amino acid is going to be a glutamate. Casein, 20% glutamate, meaning every fifth amino acid in that casein protein is going to be a glutamate. Soy is right up there, 19% glutamates. Whey protein, about 13% glutamates, okay? I think corn was about 15%. And often corn is so cheap, they use that to make uh, um, these free glutamates. All right, so anyways, it's these free glutamates are the main thing because the body doesn't care where the glutamate comes from. It doesn't care if it comes from MSG, manufactured free glutamate, MSG, or whatever, or processing of some other protein. It just wants those glutamates. That's the indicator that it's got its good protein source. Okay, then one other argument you're going to hear, you're going to hear some food companies say, oh, well, so what if you get all this glutamate? It doesn't really matter because um, it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. The problem is the brain has a bunch of areas around the third ventricle. They're called circumventricular, circumaround ventricle. Okay, and these areas are chemoreceptors. They sense the chemistry of the blood, for example. And the point is they don't have a blood-brain barrier. So you can get toxic chemicals into these areas potentially. Okay. Um, in addition, a lot of people have areas of breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. First of all, you know, newborn babies, they have a very poorly formed blood-brain barrier. 
Um, old uh, adults, they often have poorly formed blood-brain barrier and errors due to ischemic breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Okay? Persons with head trauma will have a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. People who don't need enough dietary fiber, the same dietary fiber that protects the intestinal tract's gut barrier also is used to protect the blood-brain barrier. The good bacteria take the fiber, convert it into short-chain fatty acids, in particular 4-carbon butyrate. The butyrate helps the gut lining cells make tight junctions. The butyrate travels through the blood up to the brain, and that butyrate is used by the brain to make the tight junction. So, sadly, anything that causes leaky gut will have a tendency to cause leaky blood-brain barrier. Anything that causes leaky blood-brain barrier will have a tendency to cause leaky gut. That's why I recommended changing all the uh, post-stroke, post-traumatic brain injury guidelines that these patients should be eating more dietary fiber so they'll have tight junctions in their gut and that'll also help maintain their blood-brain barrier. Because otherwise, if you have a leaky gut and a leaky blood-brain barrier, a toxin from your gut that gets across a leaky gut barrier can also get exposure to your brain, cause brain damage, okay? It's not good. I would recommend they minimize their dietary intake of free glutamate. That could get across the leaky gut, um, but in particular, it could get across the leaky blood-brain barrier. Um, so that's a good thing. Neurologists don't know that. I talked to several neurologists about it. They weren't aware of this. All right, so anyways, what I'm trying to say is a lot of people have ischemic breakdown and other uh, problems with their blood-brain barrier, so it's the brain's more permeable than it should be. Plus, if the people are bolusing the glutamates, do they're eating foods with really high and free glutamates, that can overcome the ability of the gut to sequester. Normally, the gut absorption sequesters the glutamate because it doesn't want high levels of free glutamate in the blood that could damage all types of tissue and there's also glutamate receptors in the pancreas and other parts of the body so you don't want them inappropriately activated you don't want all this free glutamate floating around okay all right now this is going to be one of your favorite slides uh if you're interested in glutamate so what's going on here is i'm showing you how you get rid of the stuff uh, of course, Nathan, glutamate can come under lots and lots of different names. There's glutamate itself. There's MSG, monosodium glutamate. There's MFG. We talked about manufacture free glutamate, how you free up the glutamates. There's MPG for monopotassium glutamate. Anything that says yeast on it, it's got probably got excessive glutamate, free glutamate in it. And that could be yeast extract, yeast food or nutrient, autolyzed yeast. You want to avoid all this stuff because I know these things can be flavoring. Anything hydrolyzed, including hydrolyzed protein, avoid it. They often will have like a bacteria working on the protein and causing hydrolysis reactions. Avoid all that stuff. It's got excessive free glutamate. Calcium caseinate, sodium caseinate, excess free glutamate. Gelatin. Watch out for these gelatins, you know, like gelatin uh, capsules or something. Avoid them, okay? Um, textured protein, pro if you can. A lot of times you can't, but if you have a choice, avoid them. Okay, texture protein, protein isolate, anything with the word protein in it often will be excessive uh, free glutamate. Soy protein, whey protein, protein isolates, all bad. Protease enzyme, anything with enzymes added to it means it's being digested, freeing up <clears throat> glutamate, it's bad. Anything that's called protein fortified, it's bad. Anything with protein powders, bad. They often have lots of free glutamate. You can get four free glutamate grams in a serving, that's bad. One piece of junk food pizza can have five grams of glutamate. That's a lot. Anything enzyme modified, anything containing enzymes bad. Fermented foods are processed, and that frees up uh, free glutamates. can be fermented by a bacteria. Flavoring, some BS term flavoring. Assume it's as, as monosodium glutamate. Over 95% of processed foods have uh, excessive free glutamate. Uh, natural flavors, even though there's lots of them, like artificial flavors, there's 80,000 chemicals can be known to be called artificial flavors per Kathy Reed, you know, the author of that book, uh, Glutamate, the Protein Biochemist, she is. Okay, so there's a lot of them. Always assume it's something to do with uh, free glutamate. Xanthan gum, soy lecithin, Aginomoto is the name of the company, so I guess they have their own name for uh, having the excess glutamate. Pectin, soy sauce, avoid soy sauce, any fermented soy product, Lots of glutamate in those things. Any soy sauce extract. Carrageenan is associated with increased free glutamate. Bouillon and broth and stock all associated with increased free glutamate. Citrate and citric acid, you know, they come from the mold, aspergillus niger, and uh, corn protein. And it simultaneously makes glutamate that's often included in the food while it makes a citric acid. So you want to avoid that. Any ultra-pasteurized food, fermented food, anything they call seasoning. It tends to all increase the amount of free glutamate. So basically, the smart move is just don't eat any processed food. Don't eat anything with two or more ingredients. Uh, vitamin rich can rich can mean added free glutamate. Some of the spices, Catherine Reed uh, recommends avoid these. 
And, and then possibly you can need an elimination diet if you're sensitive to gluten and uh, the gluten, high gluten containing foods. We're not going to get into that too much in this lecture, but um, that's a little bit interesting. Okay, uh, potential other th effects of MSG, what else can it do? It can cause obesity. A person eats too much of the food because it tastes so good, they get fat. Can cause excitotoxicity, overstimulating neurons, can cause Chinese restaurant syndrome, can cause headaches, insomnia. Um, I'm going to get into that a little more. Those headaches can be bad. They can be just plain old mild headaches. They can be migraine headaches. They can even be cluster headaches. Insomnia can be minor, but it can be very bad. Um, one of the reasons why I simplified my life so much is because I wanted to try to stay healthy. You know, if you don't really get your act together, it's hard to stay healthy as you get older, especially in the United States where so much of the food is junk food. Okay, her website, by the way, if you're curious, the lady who cured her daughter of autism, the, she's a PhD biochemist, she's a protein biochemist by trade. Her name of her website is called unblindmymind.org. Her name of her book is Fat, Stressed, and Sick. It's a good book. Um, this guy wrote a decent book. He's a, a researcher, Mark Matz, and he wrote a book called Sculptor and Destroyer, all about glutamate. And I think I covered most of what he said. I previously made a book review about it. He's more of a pure researcher, not as much uh, clinical application type stuff. Uh, a couple of other things that are interesting about it. Oh, that's another reason I don't like algae. They can make domoic acid a very, very powerful excitotoxin. That's what was thought to have made the birds crazy before that movie, you know, like the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds, because they had ingested domoic acid. That can make people very, very sick. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a lady I wanted to tell you about. She's real interesting. This is her. This is Catherine Reed. That's a picture of her. She's the one who wrote that book about, you know, curing her daughter of MSG. And she was a PhD biochemist specializing in protein. So she knew a lot already about protein biochemistry, which made her the perfect thing to figure it all out and protect her daughter. Um, her book just came out in 2023, Fat, Stress, and Sick, about dealing with glutamate. Um, she has a great TED Talk. I'll, I'll put that in the description below. Um, I'm blind my mind. Um, her, shows her daughter. I think it's true. I don't think she's just BSing. The daughter looked like she probably had autism and got better. Plus, it took a lot of her time to read all about this. Initially, she and she was, she's been checked and checked out in a whole bunch of different... She was interviewed on TV shows and other famous places. So, um, Initially, she did a gluten-free, casein-free diet, and the kid improved but not cured. Then she removed the monosodium glutamate and the kid improved more. Then she finally improved the manufactured free glutamate and the kid was cured, came back to normal, making eye contact, social, normal conversation, etc. All the body cares about is glutamate. So it doesn't care if it's MFG, MSG, or wherever. All it cares about is glutamate. So, because that's the neurotransmitter. All right. Nowadays, most dietary glutamate comes from manufactured free glutamate. Um, there's a page number in the book. Uh, she says, people got upset, the tobacco companies are doing it, but the food companies do the same thing. We got taste receptors through our gut, not just in our mouth, but also our small bowel. For example, we're wired to secrete, to, to seek free glutamate because it's a flavor enhancer and tells us we got a good protein source. We get reward neurotransmitters in our brain released. It tastes great. People eat more, buy more. The company makes money. Um evolutionarily finding a good protein source would be very valuable to our ancestors could prevent them from starving to death. Uh, let's see. She says excess free glutamate increases the risk of becoming fat, obese, diabetic, hypertensive, autistic, ADHD, anxiety, dementia, even cancer. Um, the dose of glutamate can be very high. She says that 95% of processed foods have MSG or MFG and that the average American is eating 10 to 15 grams a day. That's a ton of it. Uh, when you feed it to rodents, it helps make them fat. Um, this guy, John Olney, back in the 1960s, showed that MSG or that glutamate was a major neurotoxin. Companies hide it with all the different names like we talked about. The main dietary source of of glutamate is in these ultra processed foods, so it's wise to avoid them all. Um, nowadays, especially manufactured free glutamate is a thing to watch out for. Avoid all processed food, mouthwashes, chewing gum, cigarettes, they can all have uh, MSG. Never eat protein powders. 
She says that glutamine supplements are stupid because they just get converted to glutamate. Okay, only processed food I would eat, me personally, would be like a single ingredient, oatmeal or quinoa in some situations. Uh, I don't actually eat those very often, but I, I used to eat them more often. Anti-glutamate papers are typically hidden by a paywall. Um, this is a way you hide information from the proles versus industry-funded papers that say glutamate's okay. Um, they tend to be available free. Okay, we went through all these names already. And then you find all these interesting papers. First of all, there's a lot of fake industry-funded papers saying how great MSG is, how it has no side effects. But then you find these real papers, and they're like, well, gee, where they eat more MSG, the people are fat. Where they eat more MSG, they got more metabolic syndrome and diabetes. When you give uh, a medicine that blocks the NMDA receptor, that'll have an antidepressant effect, like ketamine is a classic research one indicating that the glutamate and the NMDA receptor have something to do with depression. If you increase glutamate in the anterior cingulate uh, cortex, you have increased attention deficit. That's characteristic of attention deficit when you look at it with MR spectroscopy. You get increased anterior cingulate cortex, glutamate is associated with impulsivity like attention deficit. What I, the reason I'm going through all these slides is to try to show you what a profound uh, ubiquitous effect glutamate has on the brain. NMDA inhibi inhibition, an excess amount, will cause, cause schizophrenia. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you here is, is tons of things are related to glutamate. Rats injected with MSG, they get increased uh, type 2 diabetes. I already showed you the thing about ketamine. Uh, glutamate, increased glutamate is associated with depression in the cingulate gyrus. Okay, it makes the neurons unhappy. Here's just some typical food like beef jerky and the way they jerk you around. There's the beef, of course, which is terrible for your health. Um, there's a, the water. Who knows if it has anything in it or not. A lot of times water, unless it's purified, it can have a lot of toxic stuff in it. Simple sugars. Um, brown sugar. Who knows if they've added something to these second ingredients. But here, beef stock, that's classically associated with increased glutamate. Flavors, typically associated with increased glutamate. Soy sauce, associated with increased glutamate. Hydrolyzed protein associated with increased glutamate. Yeast extract associated with increased glutamate. Maltodextrins can contain glutamate. Citric acid is associated with increased glutamate. Powders like pineapple powder associated with increased glutamate. So what I'm trying to say is there could be tons of free glutamate in these uh, snacks here. I would never eat this stuff. And it's very hard to know what's really in there because they do their best to hide it. So that ends um, part four of uh, these lectures on glutamate. And so I think the valuable part of this lecture was recognizing how ubiquitous it is. And you can learn all the different names, but the wisest move is just avoid it because they can even hide it in the second ingredient of a product and not tell you. So it's pretty hard to avoid this unless you avoid all processed food. And that's what I think you should do. That's what I do.